is realizing that if you are at your wit's end, if you think nothing's ever going to change and you're just destined to have a poo-poo sort of life, I'm here to say you couldn't be more incorrect. I'm not here to say that you'll never experience anything bad again. I can't promise you that. But what I can say is that if you make the choice towards your betterment, if you fight as hard as you have to fight when things are at their worst, you will get to a better place. Today is a new day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, a safe space to bridge the gap between your authentic self and your mental health. We are your food for thought exploration station in order to make today better than yesterday. Hello and welcome back to The Lone Doctrine. We are super stoked to have you here every single week. We try and be here to give you some good food for thought to keep you going, to keep you healthy, and to make sure you can bridge that gap between your authentic self and your mental health. We have been talking about rewiring the mind. We pick a topic every month, and this month is about rewiring, remapping, neuroplasticity, which is a real thing. Check it out. Look it up. Listen to the last episode. Basically, we're starting the practice of rewiring our mind, of giving our mind more options, because throughout life, we can be stuck in this repetition, and sometimes when our mental state isn't great, is in an unhealthy place, or we're having a hard time, which granted the world is having a really hard time right now. I'm having a really hard time right now, but I won't divulge all of my issues on this podcast. But we are all human. We are going to go through hard times. We're going to go through harder times. That is why your mental health is so important practicing your mental health daily, just as you eat every day, just as we know that eating better is going to make our body feel better. I'm not a nutritional coach, but we all know and we all can admit that when we eat better, we feel better. When we do right, we feel right. And that's what I want to talk about this month is realizing that if you are at your wit's end, if you think nothing's ever going to change and you're just destined to have a poo-poo sort of life, I'm here to say you couldn't be more incorrect. I'm not here to say that you'll never experience anything bad again. I can't promise you that. But what I can say is that if you make the choice towards your betterment, if you fight as hard as you have to fight when things are at their worst, you will get to a better place. But you have to make that choice and you have to have that commitment. Now, I can say that confidently, not because I had a bad day at work, not because someone didn't make my coffee right, not because of these very menial things, but because I've experienced sickness. I've experienced disease. I've experienced devastation. I've experienced fires burning down homes. I've experienced death. I've experienced loss. I've experienced the worst of the worst. And that does not diminish what you're going through if you've never experienced those things. And I hope you haven't. But what I'm trying to emphasize is that no matter how bad it gets, no matter how much pain you're in, when you make the choice to live a better and fuller life, it's those people that become the miracles. It's those people that get into huge car accidents and break every bone in the body and their doctors are telling them they can never walk again and they prove them wrong. It's the people that get addicted to drugs that fall into this pattern and they pull themselves out and they're able to tell their stories to others of living a life drug free. It's all of these moments and they're all a series of choices. But sometimes in order to make those healthy choices, we have to get out of this repetition. We have to step off of this vicious merry-go-round of negative thinking 
or trying to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So remapping your mind, rewiring your mind is an awesome place to start. Last time we talked about a few things from healthline.com, little ways you can start to practice of rewiring your brain. And you might be surprised by these things because sometimes they have nothing to do with the goal of what you're seeking or what you're even going through. It's just a way to open up your mind so you have a better perspective on life. So here's a few more ways. Travel. If you enjoy travel, here's one more reason to get out and explore somewhere new safely. Travel may help enhance your cognitive flexibility, inspire you, and enhance creativity. Experiencing new scenery and surroundings can also help you learn about different cultures and become a better communicator, both of which can have an additional cognitive benefit. Visiting new places can also help broaden your general worldview, which can help you open your mind and give you a new perspective on things closer to home like your career goals or your friendships or your personal values. This is huge. I come from a really small town and it's really easy to get in that small town mindset. It's so important to get out as often as you can, not only to experience ways of just different cultures and the different ways people live, but to see different things, to discover things you don't even know exist to discover different ways of doing things that you don't even know exist. Because sometimes it gives you a greater appreciation for your home, and sometimes it allows you to bring things back into your small town or your family or your friends and to share your experiences in order to broaden everyone's mind and to just fill their life with more discovery and imagination and joy and happiness. Because sometimes I do know it's hard to get out. A lot of people from my town get stuck there, and I've had the privilege and the opportunity to get out, but I also see the responsibility in that I get to bring back home more of the outside world, and in that, it creates more compassion in people. It creates more empathy, and those are two huge things this world needs more of. So just by traveling, even if it's just little bits here and there, it will broaden your perspective and start rewiring your mind. If you can't get out, don't worry, especially now when things aren't very safe and we're all hopefully trying to do our part to get through this pandemic. The great thing is that we have the internet. We have all these virtual reality and videos and nature programs and National Geographic and all these really great ways to experience places that I may never even get to, you may never even get to, but hopefully one day we will. You can still take yourself on a trip that's at home. Sure, it may not be the same exact thing, but it's a start. It's a start to just get a bird's eye view of different places. Or you can just try taking a long walk through your neighborhood, go away you've never gone before, or doing a different grocery store in another part of town or going to a different market or going to a different gas station or going for a hike or, again, virtually travel. Choose somewhere you've always wanted to be and just go. These little tiny changes, as insignificant as you might think, are actually huge in rewiring your mind. Another great way to rewire your mind is exercise. Most people recognize that exercise offers a number of physical benefits, stronger muscles, improved fitness and health, better sleep, but physical activity also strengthens your brain. Exercise, aerobic exercise in particular, can lead to improvements in cognitive abilities like learning and memory. According to a literature review from 2018, Exercise also helps improve fine motor coordination and brain connectivity and also may protect against cognitive decline. Another benefit of physical activity is it helps promote increased blood flow and cell growth in your brain. Totally nerdy, but totally important. 
which research links to reduce depression symptoms. Let me say that again. Exercise promotes increased blood flow and cell growth in your brain, which is proven to reduce depression symptoms. Of course, you want to exercise responsibly. You want to find what works for you, what works for your body, what works for your age and your ability. But it's a good idea to get a little bit of activity every single day if possible. Here's another great one. Make some art, even if it's scribble art. Creating art can help you see the world in a new, unique way. You might use art to sort through and express emotions, share personal experiences, or get a deeper insight on personal struggles, for example. Research in 2015 suggests art forms such as drawing and painting directly benefit your brain by enhancing creativity and improving cognitive abilities. Artistic pursuit can also help create new pathways, hey, hey, and strengthen existing connections in your brain. That's what we're looking for, leading to better cognitive function overall. When we rewire our brain, the idea is getting certain neurons, getting certain regions of your brain, and getting the new pathways firing. So we have a different lease on life. We have a different view on life. Even if you don't have any artistic ability, no experience whatsoever, no problem. Like many skills, artistic abilities often improve with time and practice. And art is so subjective. It could be anything you want. Literally anything you want. You want to scribble? Scribble. You want to finger paint? Finger paint. You want to draw? Great. Paint? Draw. Cartoons? Great. Comic books? Great. Scary things? Great. Whatever it is, however the means, buttons, string, silly putty, spray paint. That's one of my favorite. Whatever it is, find what excites you. Find what actually makes you meditate. It might make you excited. I get really excited when I spray paint my equipment. Or it might just make you very zen when you sit and paint a landscape. Or you just paint what's in your mind. Or you just paint just to paint just to see the colors. That's the greatest thing about art is literally it could be anything. Embrace unfocusing. Even the simple doodling can offer brain benefits by activating the brain's default mode network, which allows the brain to briefly unfocus. The occasional mental downtime directly relates to neuroplasticity. Letting your brain rest can improve creativity. It could interrupt unwanted habits or unwanted thoughts, and it can help you find new solutions to problems. Solution-based, letting your mind rest in order to open those new pathways can make you more creative, interrupt unwanted habits and unwanted thoughts, and help you find new solutions to problems. So next time you find yourself waiting on something with empty hands, next time you find yourself feeling depressed or anxiety-ridden or just super nervous, grab a pen and just start doodling. Art can help you relax. So consider building time for art in your week, especially if you have kids. Do art with the kids. It's so great for them to learn that that is an outlet for them as well. Involve your family. Involve your kids. Everyone will benefit. The biggest thing through all of this is committing to practice. Practicing is so important. Because even when you think it's not working, even when you think it's silly, even when you think this isn't doing anything at all, it's not this miraculous light bulb moment. You are slowly but surely opening up these new pathways and opening up these new regions of your brain in order to start thinking differently, thinking more solution-based, thinking more the cup is half full rather than half empty. 
We're not reaching for rainbows and butterflies. We're not reaching for this perfect life. We're reaching to find the abilities to choose joy, to choose happiness, to choose solution. Sometimes it's going to be messy. I'm the first one to say that when I've lost loved ones, my grief and everything that has happened to me is all over the place. But every time I have those feelings, every time I feel like I couldn't go on, every time I didn't know how to go on, I chose to use these tools to remap my mind, to take that action, to work on my mental health, and to slowly get back to a place where I could see and find joy again. When I could realize the happiness around me. Sometimes life is bittersweet. I say this all the time. Life happens all at once. I've had some of the greatest things and the worst things happen on the same exact day. So take life in stride. Try these things. What do you have to lose? These are simple steps to start rewiring your mind to make today better than yesterday. We love hearing from you and by hearing from you and you leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, it helps other people in need find us. So if you can take a quick minute to leave a quick review, we would love, love, love to hear from you. And also we'd love to hear from you on all our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, probably mostly on TikTok now, being silly as ever, but offering good food for thought. And I would love to get more involved with the whole community. So when you leave a comment, when you send me a message, I personally reach out to everyone. It may take me some time to get back to you, but I reach out to everyone and I want you to know that you are important. We are a listener-supported podcast. And if you want to continue to support this podcast and keep us on air, join us at patreon.com slash lone doctrine. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Lone Doctrine or the link in the description and anything and everything to help us keep us on air is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you again and again to our current Patreons. You're keeping us going. You're keeping us here. And more importantly, you're keeping us fighting the good fight.